state of our national security. And that's because the Royal Navy has got so few sailors that it's had to decommission two warships. HMS Westminster and HMS Argyle we will be decommissioned later this year. Their crews will now be used on the new fleet of Type 26 frigates. So I'm joined again by Charlie Peters in the studio to go over this. Charlie, we continually talk about the, 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 the snapping point of how our forces, armed forces of all natures, have seem to be snapped, spread so thin. Mm. And in this instance, to actually be decommissioning ships, because there don't appear to be enough sailors to even fill them, sends out a tawdry message of a nation in total disarray. And it's coming at a time of urgent naval demand. There is an ongoing mission in the Red Sea, of course, that the Royal Navy is supporting, the Operation Prosperity Guardian, that US-led mission to defend commercial shipping in the Red Sea. Currently, Britain has only supplied one ship to that effort, and that's HMS Diamond, a destroyer there, which has intercepted missiles fired from Yemen. But they are reportedly preparing to send HMS Lancaster, a frigate based nearby, into the Red Sea to support the freedom of navigation in those shipping lanes. But we haven't got many of those frigates left. And if we lose Westminster and Argyle, as is being reported in the papers this morning, that that would severely reduce the number available. In the first Gulf War, we had 51 frigates in the Royal Navy. That number is now dipping below 10 with these uh, removals, the scrapping of these ships. It's reported that the refurbishment of both of those ships would cost some £100 million. So, again, a very significant investment that will now be lost. And the main cause of these forces being shifted around is a lack of supply of sailors. They just don't have the personnel to arm the ships. And it comes at a time when the US is desperate for more nations to support that effort in the Red Sea. The Danes are sending over a ship. Now they've just joined this Prosperity Guardian. It's going to take two weeks for them to leave their ports in Northern Europe and make it down. They have to traverse all the way around Europe and also go through the Suez Canal to reach that location. The US is relying on support mm. from Britain and indeed from France. But at the same time as those demands are being made, Britain is cutting back what it can provide. Now, these refits um, are rumoured to cost up to 100 million quid per vessel. That's a lot of money to spend on a vessel that yeah. won't even get used. Oh, yeah. That's the first thing. And a lot of people, Charlie, and correct me if I'm wrong, are saying, is it because mm. the public image of the Navy has been, has been one that seems to be wrapped up, like in America, with this the LGBTQ movement? The advertising campaign seems to be very... Um, pride, multicoloured and all that sort of business. And lest we forget, the vast majority of sailors, va vast majority of armed forces are white, working class lads and lasses. Is it partly to blame for that? The public image of the Navy has now become a bit undesirable. Well, the recruitment to all arms of the armed forces has suffered significantly in the last five years or so. But you're right, the Navy has been particularly hard hit. It is struggling to recruit more so than any other branch of the armed forces. But many people in the Navy, they put that instead towards what they describe as a lack of operational demand. When people join the armed forces, they don't do it to sit around. Mm. They want to see the world, have that adventure and be operational. They want to deploy. Well, right now, those demands are certainly very high. The Royal Navy is truly global at the moment, especially with those expectations in the Red Sea, which could have a serious impact on the British economy. That is often being put forward as the reason why the Navy is struggling to recruit so much. But you're right, at the same time, this image has changed quite significantly. I think the armed forces, they did dabble quite briefly, didn't they, in a sort of change in recruiting tone with those adverts. But the one that captured the most attention for the Royal Navy and was seen as a, a serious success was that Made in the Royal Navy advert, yeah. that iconic advert that ran uh, on our screens for a few years. And it was so successful because it showed people that they could leave their hometown and see the world and be operational. But if those demands and those opportunities don't exist, then people will sign off and go elsewhere. I will speak to a Rear Admiral, Chris Parry, on this later on, and he said to me earlier that the Navy specifically is having a recruitment crisis over and above anything experienced in the armed, other armed forces. Why do you think that is? It's, it's the lack of ships being deployed somewhere interesting. Mm. They want to go out and do the mm. job. There's no point going through that years of training just to find yourself once again on a new training establishment or on a shore ship. You know, they want to get out mm. and enter their own naval adventure rather than being stuck in Portsmouth or Devonport. 
These opportunities, though, are surging again. I think people will, will now turn on the news, look at their screens, look at their phones and see what's going on in the world and see that being part of uh, a naval defence effort, in, well, it's currently in a defensive posture in the Red Sea, but could soon turn rather more aggressive. Seeing that kind of activity taking place will make people look at it and see, oh, I want a bit of that for myself. Well, last week, uh, the Admiral, the Rear Admiral, leading this Operation Prosperity Guardian gave, gave combat medals and ribbons to the US Navy sailors on the USS Kearney, which was the first ship to shoot down those Houthi missiles fired over mm. from Yemen. HMS Diamond did the same a couple of weeks later, becoming the first Royal Navy vessel to shoot down an aerial target in anger for over 30 years. Mm. So for the first time in over a, a generation, these ships are seeing the kind of activity that people sign up for. They want to be engaged in this work. And who knows, maybe we could now see a surge in recruitment for the Royal Navy.